has gone into the country of Panama, where we're now working with, and the Lord has helped us raise up 21 churches there. We give God all the praise for that, and we're still having souls saved there. And uh, we appreciate that, and then we appreciate the concern of the pastor and uh, our prayers, your prayers, when we're away uh, on the Sunday before I left here. If you'll remember, you, some of you might recall, we didn't have any preaching that day. That doesn't mean it's a good service. Sometimes people say we really had a good service, didn't have no preaching. But uh, Brother Wakely, sometimes we got to hear, thus saith the word of the Lord. But uh, on that particular day, the Spirit of the Lord just fell, and I was having a lot of trouble with my legs at that time. I was getting ready to leave for the mission field, and I had the church to pray for me, and the Lord really helped me. I've been falling quite a bit, lost my balance uh, several times. This time seemed like I made it real well, and I just give God praise for that, and I thank Him for the way that He's working with the mission, and... Uh, the way that he supplies the needs of the mission. Now, my mission work, I support 21 pastors. I support two supervisors and one administrator. Nobody ever, ever hears me begging for money. Never. The Lord just supplies the need. And here a while back, I had some donors to quit. And, uh, you know, uh, people do quit. I mean, they just take out. And you ask them for a reason, they don't give you a reason, they just quit. And I was getting a little concerned about it. And Sister Rich, she's told me, she said, well, the Lord, this work is of the Lord. The Lord's going to make a way. And so also, not too awful long ago, this church raised me $1,200 plus to buy Bibles. You remember that? Well, most of those Bibles are gone. Well, this week, this past week while I was gone, Somebody that I don't even know from Spoon Gap, Virginia, sent a check for $500 for Bibles. And then if these, this person walked through that door, I wouldn't know who they were, a person that I've never seen, a person I've never talked to on the phone, a person I've never received a letter from or wrote to, sent me a check and said, here's $10,000 to put on the mission work. Keep it going for the Lord. Now, you tell me that God's not real? And that God won't supply the need? But not only in money, but he supplies every need. And I've been preaching a little message over on the mission field. And uh, like Brother Bryn here might want to try it sometime or somebody else. It's just a little message. But I've won dozens of souls with it. Four things that God has never seen. Yeah, God's all wise. And there's no searching of his understanding. His ways are past finding out. But there's four things that he's never seen. Number one, he's never seen a sin that he did not hate. He hated it so much that he wrote in his book that the wages of sin is death. And I'm not going to preach that message. I'm just giving you a little outline of it. And uh, also, he hates it so much that uh, he sent his son to die. That's one thing he's never seen. But number two, he's never seen a sinner that he did not love. Aren't you glad of that? Oh, yes. Never seen a sin that he did not hate. He's never seen a sin that he did not love. A sinner that he did not love. And he never saw any other plan of salvation. Other than through the name of Jesus. And the blood of the lamb. Oh yes. That's number three. And for you that might be trying to get it down. It's very simple. Number four. He never seen a better time to be saved than today. For today is the day of salvation. I've taken that little message. Preaching in a lot of villages and places that never heard the gospel. And souls have come to the Lord. And so I laid it aside for a while and I opened it back up the other day. And here come souls to Jesus. And you know what it let me know? That God said, my word will not return unto me void. You just keep on preaching. Keep on telling the story. Keep on working for the Lord and the Lord will help. 
Now, Brother Moore preached us a wonderful message today and told us to be of good cheer. And I hope it's not like that sign I seen in that restaurant said, I saw this sign said, cheer up, things could be worse. And said, I cheered up, and sure enough, they got worse. No, let's don't go that route. Oh, no. But be of good cheer. And I started looking up a little things on that this afternoon. And, uh, you know, Jesus told that man that had palsy that was brought by four, while he was still on that bed, while he was still afflicted, he told him, said, be of good cheer. Many places you can find that in the Bible. So the Lord bless you, and I thank the pastor for that wonderful message and giving me this little bit of time to speak to you tonight. I really need your prayers. I'm going to be uh, doing a lot of work for the Lord. If the Lord gives me strength, I'm 77, about 77 and a half years old, and God's still giving me strength and help, and I know that comes from the Lord, that and eating a lot of big steaks. Boy, that helps you a lot, too. Last night, I went and got me a 21-ouncer. Ooh, brother. Uh, you talk, talk about good. It was good. And uh, then uh, uh, that helps me out a whole lot. But not only that physically, but I believe in prayer. And I believe in studying this book. You know, you can't read this book too much. And sometimes you have to force yourself to pray and read this book you may not feel like it sometimes I'm a preacher and have been for 54 plus years but sometimes I do not feel like praying sometimes I do not feel like reading this book but this is my lifeline prayer is my only hope so I force myself to get up of a morning and get down on my knees I forced myself to go get this black back sin killing devil driving book and I start reading the word of God. And you know you can't pray very long or read this book very long without finding new hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you tonight and I'm so glad to see these men here and hear that good report on that testimony that was given Wednesday night and those two men, men that were here today. I talked to them a little bit. And you know, you just keep coming around this. And the first thing you know, it's going to get a hold of you. Because the Spirit of the Lord has a way of reaching into the hearts of the people. Oh, it's not. Oh, yeah, he uses preachers and he uses singers. But when he does, it's the Spirit of God that touches the heart. Not personalities. Oh, not the way we're dressed. One young man that's here today uh, told me, said, I feel underdressed today. And I said, man, you look fine. So you don't have to look any certain way to come to this church. Oh, yeah, I know our pastor's always slicked up. And all these guys got on these neckties and these uh, colored coordination clothes and all, most of them. You don't have to be, do that to come here to this church. You can come as you are, but chances are you won't leave like you came. You told me not to, you didn't tell me not to preach, but you didn't call me.